Oh, good day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. This afternoon, we're going to kill a wild sow that we caught a couple of weeks ago. We've been feeding her so that we can get any carrion out of her. She is not a real big pig, but I don't want to feed her indefinitely. She has been pretty wild and she's not quietening down much more, so I think it's time to get rid of her. It's winter time at the moment and the temperatures of a night are about 10 degrees. So it's ideal weather to kill her in the late afternoon, hang her overnight, get up early in the morning and then butcher the carcass. Don't expect a professional butchering job. We're not butchers. Anyway, let's get on with it and see how we go. Skinning a pig is not my preferred method, and I didn't intend to skin this pig today. I was going to scald her and pull the hair off. However, we just ran out of time. I wasn't organised as I thought I was, so I took the easy way out. So we'll go straight down the middle and be careful not to perforate the intestines. This bit here is the bladder. You want to be careful getting that out that you don't rupture the bladder and get urine all through your carcass. This video is not intended to be a video on how to butcher your own pig. It's just how I do it. I'm not a butcher. I've just picked up a few tricks around the ridges. Having said that, most animals I can turn into a meal one way or another. Check all the organs of your pig, like here's a kidney, and make sure that you don't have anything that looks suspect, like any disease or any irregularities in your organs. Here we've got the liver, and again, make sure there's nothing that looks like a disease in the liver. Make sure it's nice and evenly coloured. <laughs> I usually cut down through the brisket like I just did. Then I can open the ribs up and remove the heart and lungs, etc. Heart looks all right, no problems. Okay, everything looks good in there, nice and clean. Nearly dark. <clears throat> no more trotting for her. It's early the next morning and we're going to cut the carcass in half first. And I'll just put a line to follow with the saw. By hanging the carcass overnight, your meat sets nice and firm and it's a lot easier to cut up your animal. A lot of the time when we have our cold room going, we'll actually hang them in there for a couple of days or more. In the case of beef, I hang them in there a couple of weeks before I cut them up. Most times I just cut up what Pat wants. I let her direct operations on what size bits of meat she wants and how she wants to cut it up. 
First thing I'll do is remove the front leg. all that okay all right now we've got this back leg I'll cut it off Give it that flap down there hold that like that I'll cut around the muscle here and Take that bone out there. As you can see, we're not very sophisticated at it, but it works. Cut this leg off here. The other thing is, it's pretty quick. Right, you want that like the half? Cut that half for roast. Now, you can either cut that up into chops or roast, whatever you want to do. All right, we'll make some chops here. Nice thick chop. Got it. Hold it. These chops will probably braise. Give them a good cook so they're nice and tender. They should be very tasty, that's for sure. This saw isn't as good as a band saw, but it works, and it's what we got. Oh, it's cold here this morning. Now, what do you want to do with this belly flap? Um, dice it. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time with the belly flap, we made bacon. But we're sort of not organised for that, and the pig's not really big enough for that either. I'll dice all that up later and cut the, most of the fat off it. Here we've got the neck meat, so I'll cut that up as well later. We want spare ribs and chops. Better cut this through here.
I'll make a small loin roast out of this. There's only two of us, so we don't need a real big heap each meal. Lift it up a bit off the ground. Off the ground. Okay, spare ribs. If you keep cutting forward to where your brisket is with making spare ribs, what happens is you get to a point where there's a cartilage in the middle of the beast and you can't really cut it through easily with a knife. You can use a chopper, but I just use a saw. Now, the chops off this aren't going to be real big, but that's all right. Instead of having one, I'll have to have two. We're not getting real fancy this time. We're not making sausages or anything like that. <laughs> Sometimes as well as sausages if we've got a bigger pig. We also make mints out of the leaner meat. But we're not doing any of that with this pig. We're just basically cutting it up so that we can eat it. The other thing I've had a go at is making hams. Homemade hams are really nice. Ugh. That freezing cold's starting to warm up a bit, thank goodness. Righto, now what do you want to do with this here? Um, I suppose it's another roast, is it? Will look like a roast for you? Bone out the meat and make some soup out of the bones, eh? Here I'm just going to bone out what's left of the shoulder and the neck. You saw that I took the um, front leg off earlier. This is just what's left above the leg. And there's quite a bit of meat there. A good piece of meat actually. And I'm going to dice that up. Nice tickle. Now we've we've just got this piece of flap left. Uh, all this is fat. We could render that down and use make some pork fat out of it. See what Pat wants to do about that. She probably won't. Fair bit of fat inside here. Uh, I might render that down in a pot. <coughs> Get the fat off it and there's not a real lot of meat on there. Might rent, take the fat out of it and give the rest to the animals. There's not much in that. We've got plenty of diced pork so far and we'll have double that amount when we do the other half. This here in the corner, that's all that's left over. Not much at all. I'm not going to show cutting up the second half of the pig. Obviously, it's just a repeat performance of the first half. 
That wraps up this edition of Farming Live Australia. See you next time.